For this tutorial, I'm using 20 gauge silver filled wire, but later on I'll show you different designs, types and also gauges of wire, so there will be many rings to choose from. I will also share plenty of hammering tips if this is something you would like to try. So this time I'm using a toothpick to bend the wire, wrapping it around and then twisting it twice. Next I'm taking a cuticle stick and again wrapping the wire around and twisting it twice. And I'm going to repeat this process until I have four loops made with a cuticle stick. I'm using pliers and carefully flattening the loops. Then I'm flattening the first loop I made on the top with my chain nose pliers. And it's time to shape the loops into squares or diamonds, whatever you want to call them. I'm trying to make them as symmetrical as I can using the same width of the chain nose pliers. I'm doing one side first, then flipping the ring band and shaping the loops on the other side. And then flattening and straightening the whole ring band with nylon jaw pliers. Wrapping it around my ring mandrel. And snipping some of the wire off. So really you don't need the whole 20 centimeters to start with. But it might be easier for you to do this next part with slightly longer wires. I'm bending the wires backwards a bit and then bending the ends to make hooks. We like making hooks on this channel, don't we? And I'm pressing them together and feeding them through the loop and also wrapping them around. I'm again cutting the ends off slightly with the flush side of the wire cutters and then using my round nose pliers again, I'm carrying on with the wrapping. At this point I'm using my ring mandrel to hold the ring and also to keep its round shape. Since I'm applying quite a lot of pressure by bending the ends. I'm also pressing this knot with nylon jaw pliers to flatten it more. Then I decided to shape the squares a bit more and hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. As I'm pressing each side with chain nose pliers, I'm using pressure and pushing the tip of the square upwards turning my pliers sideways and also applying pressure with my other hand by pressing or squeezing the ring slightly. This really defines the squares and makes them taller. And just so you know, you can absolutely make the ring first with round loops and then shape them into squares later. 
meaning at this stage, whatever sails your boat. Again, I made this ring about two to three sizes smaller than I need because I'm going to hammer it now. Sliding the ring on my steel ring mandrel as far as I can and for this particular ring I'm using a dome face hammer to um, hammer it. And as I'm hammering this ring let me tell you a few important facts if you are considering making hammered jewelry. Number one. When hammering metal, it will expand in size depending on how much you smash it. But not only that, it also hardens your metal. Which is great because it will keep its shape better, but it will also make it more brittle. So it's a good idea not to overdo this. Because at some point the metal, and I'm mainly referring to wire, will snap. And once that happens, there is no coming back. Number two, choose the right wire. Ideally, bare metals like bare brass, copper, aluminium, bronze, gold, sterling silver or silver or gold filled. Plated wires are really not ideal, I mean it's a possibility, but it's just not gonna look great. But definitely not enameled wires, sometimes they are called non-tarnish. These are not great. They are coated in a thin layer of enamel and that is just gonna peel off. And the metal looks pretty dull, but I guess these can be used for practicing. Also, don't go for very thin wires if you want to hammer them a lot. They will just break. So 22 gauge is still kind of okay for light hammering, but nothing thinner than that. Go for 20 gauge and up. Number three, use a completely round steel mandrel with no sizing marks, as those could get printed on the inside of your ring. Also, wooden or plastic mandrels will not work and they will get damaged by hammering on them. It's just going to be one indent next to each other. <laughs> Number four, flip your ring. So hammer your ring for a bit, then flip it and hammer again. It will ensure your ring is even and not angled. And also push the ring downwards on your mandrel as you are hammering. Number five. Choose the right hammer. I could really go on about this, but there are so many different types. I'm going to keep it short. Here I'm using a dome face hammer, which gives a nice faceted texture. Later I'll use a pin hammer to give my other rings just a nice smooth flattened look. And if you don't really want any textures and you just want to make the ring a bit bigger, you can use a rawhide mallet for example. Number six. Ideally keep the mandrel on your lap as it will be a lot easier and also less noisy. I'm not doing it right now since I'm filming this process but will do later. And needless to say, keep your fingers at a safe distance from the hammer. I'm sure that's enough of information on hammering in one video and I'll probably repeat myself in the future. Here I'm demonstrating how strong the ring is, I'm pressing it with my fingers, but nothing. I'm sure if I applied a lot more pressure it would deform or snap, but I'm not gonna ruin it. I'm not 100% happy with the knot, but it's okay and it's smooth, it's not gonna scratch or catch on anything. Because the very ends are still facing downwards. Here is a similar ring I made out of bare brass wire and I love how the knot came out. I kept the wires short and I also used a cuticle stick to make the first loop, that's why it's so big. And then I made one out of copper wire using only toothpick to create all the loops and I also left them round. <laughs> Funny story, I made it out of enameled copper wire. <laughs> 
I really thought I was grabbing a bare copper, but nope, I literally have so many different wires and this one just said copper and I used it. And then regretted my decision, because once I hammered this ring, I realized I made a mistake. It just looks dull and unattractive, but hey, at least I can show you what the design looks like. Next please! This one has been made by twisting the wire and only making one loop in the middle. And of course the one at the beginning. And I have used a pin hammer this time to simply just flatten the ring without any additional textures. I'm hammering on my lap this time, so my hand is either holding the ring mandrel and resting on my lap, or I lift it from my lap and push, or let's say rest, the white end of the ring mandrel against my tummy whilst hammering the ring. But regardless of how I hold it, I'm holding it firmly to have full control of what I'm doing. I hope it makes sense. Also, this ring is made of silver filled wire again. And finished. Wonderful. I love it. But it's so big. I'm not sure where I went wrong with this one, but I basically made this ring and the ones that will follow <laughs> about a week later and I just guessed the length without looking at my previous notes. So I kind of failed there. I'm just gonna give them away to someone with wide fingers. Oh well, at least I have presents for Christmas ready. This next ring was made out of 18 gauge bare brass wire and oh boy, was it a challenge. <laughs> the brass wire in this gauge is so much harder to twist and shape, even hammer. So it took me longer and a lot more effort went into this ring. What can I say? But I finished it. And that's a win. It would have been a lot easier to use bare copper wire in 18 gauge or even silver filled wire, since the core of this wire is usually copper and the layer of fine silver is very soft too. But I didn't have any at home, so brass it was. But it looks good overall, even the knot, although it's pretty massive. <laughs> And this last one I would like to call a hard ring and you'll see why in a minute. Again I made the same ring with 20 gauge bare brass wire, just press this loop with pliers. Then I'm twisting the wire in the corner of the loop with almost the tips of my round nose pliers. One side first, then I'm flattening the heart with chain nose pliers. Then the other side. I'm pretty much turning the pliers in or sideways, not sure how to explain it. I really hope you can see the movement of my hand. And another one. Here I'm holding the twisted part in my chain nose pliers and pressing the heart again, this time with flat nose pliers. And I'm just repeating the same process until I have lots of little hearts on my ring. And off to hammering again with pin hammer. Now 
Now this ring turned out very nice but there was a piece of wire I wanted to remove and as I tried to cut it off with my flush cutters I made a bit of a mess. And the end of the wire is still there happily hammered and I couldn't remove it. So instead of adding more stress on myself I'm using a round needle file and filing the excess off. And now it looks better and more importantly it will not catch on anything nor it will scratch my finger. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful. Again I would love to hear which one is your favorite. Mine is definitely the one with one square in the middle but too big. It's pretty dainty and elegant. And are you going to try hammering your jewelry? Unless you already do of course. It's very relaxing and therapeutic. Highly recommend. Remember to subscribe to my channel if you are not already, like this video and I will see you next week with another fun project. Have a splendid day. Bye.